Gifting season is in full swing and this is also the time of year where my brain goes into full overdrive to make sure I've got everybody on my list covered with something unique and thoughtful. It's also the time of year I realize I probably forgot a few people. If you're with me, no worries. I've got a ton of quick and easy DIY gifts that you can throw together and it will help you cross off everyone on your list. This is Whiskey and What, my name is Whitney, and a huge hello to my craft buddies who come back each week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries, just hit subscribe down below so you can DIY along with us. Also, I wanna give Canon a huge thank you for sponsoring today's video, and let's get started on the first DIY gift. I love this first one so much, I always make extra for myself as well. So you need some brown sugar as well as some coconut oil. This is just some that I picked up at my dollar store. You need a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of coconut oil, and then however much you want vanilla extract. I add a decent amount because I love the smell. Then just using a spatula, I mixed everything up until it gets to a clumpy mixture that's gonna stick together like this. Then all you have to do is scoop it into an airtight container and when the lid's on, it will last about one to two months for your gifty. You could customize with different scents and different essential oils and it makes your skin feel so nice and moisturized. These quick and easy candies were such a huge hit last year, I wanted to share them again because they are super great for teachers, the UPS guy, coaches, all the things. You put down some square pretzels onto a pan with some parchment paper, add either Hershey Kisses or Rolos on top, melt them in the oven at 250 degrees for about two minutes, and then you can top them with either pecans or other nuts, or you can even do M&Ms. Once you push them into the top, just go ahead and let them cool. Then you can package them up. You can make these in bulk really easily. And I just stick some parchment paper inside a tin, wrap it up. You can add a fun little tag. I still get compliments on the ones I gave out last year. So you better believe I'm doing it again. Personalized gifts like this jug is a great way to show that you put some thought in. So I like to get jugs like this in any floral section at your local craft store and start by measuring the width and the height of where you want your decal. Now I cut mine out using my vinyl cutting machine. However, you could also hand do this with a paint marker if you have nice handwriting. I like to do a block font for the and family as well as a script handwriting font for the last name. These are quick and easy to apply. I just used permanent vinyl. And this is one of those things where it looks like you tried super hard, but you didn't have to put in a ton, ton of effort. This is great for teachers, hostess gifts, and you can also do a different version of the last name or a holiday motif. I love the nostalgic feeling you get around the holidays each year, and that is why I love to give photo gifts for Christmas. It is a great way to look back on all the fun stuff you did the year prior, and also keep those memories alive for years to come. So this year, I'm breaking out my new Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer to create some unique and custom gifts for my friends and family. And look how small and cute this thing is. Its small size makes it amazing for storing away, but it packs a big punch. You could print in a variety of sizes from stickers and two inch square prints to photo strips and all the way up to four by six photos. It uses dye sub technology, which means your prints can last up to 100 years and are instantly dry. I hate when I'm in the crafting zone, I grab a fresh print and my ink smudges all over my hands. Not with this printer. And whether you're always on your phone, a tablet techie, or even a desktop person, you can easily print from your favorite device via Wi-Fi. I open up my Canon selfie app and I follow the easy prompts. It has me select my photo, what size I want, the finish, and the quantity, and then I hit print and I'm ready to craft. You can create collages and apply filters before printing like black and white or sepia, and you can even add a QR code to the images to include in a digital gift. I printed a variety of images from our YouTube trip this past fall in a photo strip size. I trimmed them and then I added them to this fun jar ornament I got from my local craft store. Then to take it to the next level, I added some Colorado themed scrapbook stickers. When I scan that QR code, I have it set up to take me directly to my vlog from the trip so I can relive the memories. I also love mixing wood and photos, so I grabbed a variety of different items from all of my favorite craft stores as I saw them this year, and I decided to stain them all in my favorite stain color. And then I started with this block. I printed out some four by sixes of our family photos we got taken this fall so I could make this fun gift for my parents. I trimmed down the photos to the size that would fit the cube, and then I applied them with some spreadable glue. 
the glue held really great everything stayed down perfectly and this is going to be a fun little keepsake slash decor piece that I can gift to my parents this holiday season I love that I've got pictures of the whole family individuals of Finn and them and then I also have a really cute one of Finn at the top I know they're gonna love it if you're looking for a traditional ornament, this is awesome. You can just use that spreadable glue to add the photo to a wood round, write information on the back and gift that. I also like to do this for friends and coworkers that I'm not super close with because with social media, you can find images of their family and make a personalized gift for them without a ton of extra legwork. So you could add them to different tags, different houses, add a little bit of embellishment and you get a really personal gift Another one of my favorite photo gift ideas is to either grab some 4x4 tiles or these DIY coasters that I picked up at my local craft store. I printed up some 4x6s of our family and I am making this gift for myself, but this would also be great for parents, grandparents, etc. I trimmed them down so they would fit on my 4x4 coaster and then you can either stop there or continue to trim them so they look like an instant photo. I added it with the spreadable glue and then I added three light coats on top, letting it dry in between to make sure that no condensation would get under my photos. I love these so much. I've been making these for years. They're great for somebody that got married this year, somebody that had a maternity shoot this year, somebody that got some family photos like this, and then just add some felt to the back so it doesn't scratch anybody's table. To get them ready for gifting, I tied them with some jute twine and added this tag. I printed out with my Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer, and I like that it makes it a little bit more substantial, and all of these tags are gonna be free printables over on my blog. I've got a few more DIYs coming up later on utilizing prints from my Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer, but I also wanted to let you know that this itself would be a great gift. The first thing I thought of is grandparents. I would love to gift this to my mom. She can just put it on her counter. It doesn't take up a ton of space. And then when I've got new pictures of Finn, I just text them to her. She can print them out and she's got fresh hard copy framed photos of Finn all year long. Huge thank you to Canon for sponsoring that portion of the video and let's make another DIY gift. I really wanted to give Alex something personalized and fishing themed this year, but I wasn't sure what to do until I found this frame on clearance. I removed the glass and measured about how large I would need a decal, and then I cut out the shape of a musky fish, which is the type of fish that Alex likes to fish for. Then I took the vinyl that I cut out, it's just permanent vinyl, and I applied it to my glass. Then I went over the top with some black spray paint to essentially create a frame within a frame. I was very careful not to drench the entire thing. You want to cover it, but you don't want it to be so wet that it's going to seep under the vinyl. Then when it was completely dry, I removed the vinyl carefully with my little pick tool. And then I had this musky frame that I could fill with images. I pulled out my Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer to get all of these different images so I would have a lot of options. And I did a mixture of Alex with his trophy fish that he's caught over the years that he's super proud of, as well as some photos of him and Finn, kind of the next generation of fishing. Then I flipped it over, started kind of laying out where I wanted everything to go, and then I was trimming images and hooking them down with some tape. I like the tape because it holds everything in place, but it's also removable if for some reason you get somewhere where you need to rearrange your photos. I also trimmed out some of the dead space over the top of like some of the sky and images just so then that way I could fit more fish in the small space that I was working with. I am really happy with how this turned out. It's going to be a great custom piece of art on the wall in his office and I love how the pictures kind of intertwine within the fish. You can tell it's a fish but it was also a big enough frame that you can see all the images inside as well. I love to have plastic ornaments on hand because they're really versatile for gifts. This one is super fun and great for neighbors. I took the top off and I put an individual pack of hot cocoa mix inside of the ornament. I just use a little bit of paper to make a funnel and you wanna make sure you clean the inside of your ornaments first. Then add some fun mini marshmallows using that same paper funnel and then you can pop the lid on, tie some ribbon, and then here's another free printable for you you can add of how to mix up the hot cocoa. I love that you can also pair it with a Dollar Tree mug and it makes a really fun individual gift for coworkers. I also love that it's an experiential gift. You can enjoy it for the holidays and it doesn't add a ton of clutter to your house. 
Speaking of experiential gifts, here is a, another great one you can throw together really quickly. I got this bucket at Hobby Lobby and I started by filling the bottom with some wrapping stuff. Then I filled it up with some popcorn and a holiday letter board from Walmart for this movie night container. Now, instead of using tissue paper, I added some wrapping paper I got from Dollar Tree that had a variety of different Christmas movies on it. And I used that as tissue paper to kind of add to the overall theme. I finished it off with a little Rudolph candy as well as these spoons all from Dollar Tree, wrapped it in a cellophane bag, and then tied some ribbon on the top. Now just do a regular bow when you're adding tags and things like this because this is not the time to be MacGyver, just give it a regular bow. I decided to print the tag with my Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer just so the tags would stand up and not be too flimsy. How fun is this to gift to neighbors, especially with little kids, and give them a reason to dedicate some time to just spending time together. This is a great one for work secret Santas or just a small stocking stuffer for a girlfriend. Grab some wallets from anywhere. These just came from Target, but you can find some stylish ones at a variety of different places. And then I cut out some either initials or monograms in a variety of different colors. I use my small little Cricut mini press to add it. I'm using a Teflon sheet as well as the lowest setting, and I'm going really carefully to make sure I don't melt anything. But once you get it to stick and peel off that carrier sheet, these are super fun and customizable. And you can also add different images or icons as well. I love this one because I put my business cards in it in my purse and it is super functional and stylish. Also super functional and stylish is this 15 inch wood round riser. I grabbed this circle from Menards but any hardware store carries it and then you're going to also want some of these legs. I'm using finial caps from Walmart. I attached it with some wood glue onto each of the legs and then I put something really heavy on the top and let it sit so it would stay. I stained the entire thing and then after that I used some painter's tape once the stain was fully dry to tape off and paint some black lines. Now you could add a name to this, you could do a stencil, you could handwrite on something, but I just liked the simplistic black lines. Once you seal it with some polycrylic, this thing is great for gifting, it's awesome for entertaining, a candle stand, or just to add to decor. Another really fun use for those plastic ornaments is to create these bubble ornaments. I cut out some images and these are just two images per one four by six. If you're not printing at home, if you're printing somewhere else, just add two to one sheet. I added a slight curve to the ends, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Rolled it up like a scroll and slid it in on the inside. I used my scissors as well as my fingers to get it to kind of pop out like a bubble. And I did the same thing for the second picture. So obviously Finn and I, and then Finn as Bluey for Halloween. He was so cute and I definitely want to commemorate this on the tree. You can add the top as well as ribbons. You could do this with both the flat ones as well as the round ones. This is a great way to get a large image onto your tree super easily. Do you have a friend that would love some fun earrings like these? Well, here's how to make them really easy. Grab some fish hook earring pieces from any jewelry department at a craft store, and then you're either gonna want some fun ornaments if you wanna go the holiday route, or you can find some embellishments like this in the jewelry section at the craft store as well. It's as simple as taking some needle nose pliers, opening up the earring hook, putting the ornament or whatever embellishment on it, and then closing it up. You could make a ton of different variations of these. These would be super cute to gift to teachers. You could gift them to your friends. This would also be great in a Secret Santa white elephant. What's really great is you can really personalize these based on the person's interests. Now we can't forget our four-legged friends or any of our furry friends for that matter. So here is a fun treat jar. I grabbed this jar at Dollar Tree and I removed the lid and spray painted it so it looked a little more festive, but you could easily leave it the silver if you wanna skip this step. Then I cut out a variety of shapes with my vinyl cutter as well as the names cut out in little bones. I put them on to the lids and they were super easy to put together. I recently shared this in my Dollar Tree Cricut Blanks video. So if you want a slower version, head over to that video. But all you need to do then is add either some treats or some toys inside of there. It is ready to go, tie a ribbon, no wrap needed. And it's super thoughtful to think about the four-legged member of the family. So full transparency, just gifting a candle can kind of be blah, but here's a way to dress it up and make it super cute and also as a piece of decor. 
I love to grab these under $4 candles at Walmart. I grabbed fresh baked cookies as well as this bourbon pecan pie scent. These are my favorites, but you can pick whatever you're feeling. And they're super easy to remove the label. They come off really cleanly. And then all you need to do is measure and cut a decal. I did one on the fresh baked cookies about tis the season to bake cookies. And then I cup one super general with this definition of home saying. You could wrap this up in some cellophane with some ribbon, add it to something else, quick and easy, and it definitely elevates that typical candle gift. In this video, I've showed you a lot of ways to use traditional printed photos, but here's how you can add one to a candle. Grab some parchment paper, a heat source, as well as some just regular white tissue paper. Take some printer paper and trim your tissue paper about to the size, and this is gonna act as a carrier through your printer. I trimmed it a little under the size that I needed for the paper, and I taped it all around the outside just so you don't jam your printer. Then depending on your settings, you can just go ahead and print your images like normal, make sure you size them, and I do that within Google Docs. And then I trim it down the tissue paper to the size that's needed. You can add it to the top of your candle, wrap it with some parchment paper, and then use your heat source to essentially melt that top layer of wax, as you can see here as the colors are changing, to then essentially suck in that tissue paper. You can peel back your parchment paper and test the process, make sure it's looking like how you want, but then you can peel it off, let it cool, and you have an image inside of your candle. I love this one of the photo that we took right after Finn was born. It's a great keepsake and also a great gift. One of my favorite gifts that I have gifted this year was these stackable coffee mugs I made for everyone that went on the Denver trip. Now I decided to try a new thing that I had seen on TikTok and that was etching with citrus strip. So I cut out these decals in the design that I created. I added some citrus strip over the top and this is just the stripping gel that you can use on furniture. I made sure it was well coated and then I just set it to the side. Then after about an hour, I went through with my weeding tool to make sure that things were coming up. I used some hot water to scrub off all of the citrus strip as well as the vinyl decal. And then with a mixture of my weeding tool as well as my scrubber brush, I removed all the bits inside where I wanted it stenciled off. Then it revealed that stainless steel and everyone loved these. It's a fun custom gift and no one will believe you made them at home. Now, what if that citrus strip seems like a lot? No worries, you can do these etched beer can glasses. I have a variety of different files that fit these cups over on my blog, so I will link that down below for you. But I did some Christmas, some regular, and then a full can wrap. You're just gonna cut them out on vinyl to the size of your cup. And I've got a full video showing this a lot slower if you wanna check that out. But I applied the full can wrap as well as the other ones to the front of the cans. And then I used a product called Armor Etch to etch into the glass. You're gonna apply it in a nice thick coat over your stencil and use painter's tape if you don't have enough vinyl to act as a barrier. I leave it on for about 15 to 20 minutes, even though the container says three to five minutes. I just like to make sure that everything's good. And then I rinse it off with some hot water. I would recommend wearing gloves for this. I didn't for this project, but now I do. Once everything is rinsed off and you wash it with soap and water, you're good to use it. And I love that these are now dishwasher safe. They're great for iced coffee, for beverages, and they're also great to gift. I like to put some tissue on the inside so you can see the motif. And you can also add a gift card for some coffee, or you could add it in with a six pack as a wonderful personalized gift. Now this next one's gonna look like you literally spent hours in the workshop to make it, but I promise you, you won't have to. It starts with a one by 12 by four kind of standard pine project board. I got mine at Menards, but you can get it from any hardware store. When you're in the store looking, you're gonna wanna look down the board like this, make sure there aren't any weird bows to it, and also make sure there aren't any random chips out of the edges because that's gonna look funny. I started by giving it a really good sand down, and then I also rocked my sander around the edges to create this rounded corner because I have a toddler. This is optional, but I decided to distress it with a hammer as well, and then stained the entire thing. Now here is what it looks like with that distressing on it. So if you don't like those little nicks out of it, don't hit it with a hammer, just leave that step out. Then before I added the legs, I gave it a really good seal with some polycrylic, and then I added my legs from Amazon, which I will link down below. 
when I made this in the spring, so many of you bought these legs. I know so many of you recreated this as well. And it's as simple as lining them up in the corner, marking where the holes go, and then giving yourself just a really shallow pilot hole. Now don't push too hard because you're gonna go through the board and you're gonna be sitting on a hole. Just enough so that you don't split the wood when you put the screws in. I got them started with a Phillips hand screwdriver, but then I ended up finishing by driving them through with my drill. This is just the hardware that came along with the set and that is it. You are all good to go, all done, and this is a really pretty piece. It's great for decor. It will also fit probably one adult. I definitely don't recommend putting like a basketball team on it. It's great for decor and also it's one of those things that if you're not a big builder but you gift this to someone, they are going to be very impressed by you. So pat yourself on the back, slap a gift tag on it, and call it a day. And our last thing we're going to whip up are some of my favorites. These are super good. They are little pretzel, peanut butter, and chocolate bites. Step one, take one cup of peanut butter, add it to a bowl, and then add two tablespoons of melted butter and give that a good stir. So then to that mixture, you're gonna add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of powdered sugar. Then give that a really good mix. You could also use a hand beater if you don't wanna do it by hand. You're looking for a doughy consistency that doesn't stick to your hands when you get it out. Then we're gonna take that mixture, create little marble-sized balls of the peanut butter mixture, and put it in between two of our little pretzels. You could also use the square pretzels we used earlier too if you wanna use one bag. And once those are all complete, you're gonna put them in your freezer for 30 minutes so that they can firm up. Then when you have about five minutes left in your freezing time, I took some almond bark. I used four squares. You just bust it off. It's easy and affordable to find. You're gonna heat it up at 30 second increments till you get it to this creamy consistency. And then I just took a fork, stuck it in my peanut butter section of my little sandwich, dipped it in, shook off any extra almond bark, and then I'm putting it on parchment paper to harden. You can pop these into the freezer for about 20 minutes. It will help them harden up much quicker. And also, if you don't want to eat a bunch of these, don't try them before you gift them because they are so delicious and I always end up making more for myself. But that's a sign of a good gift. They're nice and tasty and a festive treat. That's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite gift. And if you plan on making any of these for your family and friends. Also, while you're down there, be sure to check out more information about the Canon Selfie CP1500 wireless photo printer. I am loving all these projects I created and I can't wait to use it in the coming year on more craft projects. A huge thank you to Canon for sponsoring today's video and a huge thank you to you for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, do so down below so you don't miss a future video. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye!